A fairly common question I see pop up every now and then in the comments of my various videos is something to the effect of, hey Ed, I know you cover a lot of upcoming games, but can you do a list of monster taming games that are complete that we can play right now? No early access, no beta, no alpha, no nothing like that. Now that makes sense because my channel does focus mostly on upcoming titles or titles that just came out as we're more news oriented, so I totally get that. I have created many list style videos for the monster taming genre in the past. You will see a playlist link below that contains something like 20 different videos. These types of videos range from new and upcoming games for the Switch, new and upcoming games for the Xbox and PlayStation, specific categories of games like new and upcoming roguelikes, Anyways, all that said, today we're going to be talking about 10 complete monster taming titles, and for this video I am going to keep the platforms accessible. We did have a classic monster taming list as well, but not everybody has a Game Boy Color or a PS1, so this video will be a lot more modern with our approach. That said, after you're done here, let me know if you enjoyed the video, because if you guys do like me going over these types of games, I will definitely make a part 2. Let's dive in. Monster Sanctuary takes the idea of having a monster taming RPG and fuses it with the Metroidvania genre, making for something really great out of two genres that you wouldn't think would mix. In Monster Sanctuary, you play as one of the four prominent keepers, whom are all part of esteemed families within the Monster Sanctuary. As of such, you are bestowed a spectral familiar, which is basically like a special monster that are passed down through the generations in these families that can also talk and aid you on your quest, and then your journey begins. You'll be spending your time fighting other monsters and keepers in three-on-three -three turn-based combat that favors building combos and various buffs and debuffs in order to strategically defeat your enemies. No spamming Earthquake here. The game also packs a few difficulty options, new game plus, and an upcoming DLC slated for the second quarter of the year. If you're looking for a game that puts a heavy emphasis on the idea of nuzlocks and randomizers, then look no further than Abomination, a turn-based monster taming roguelike that does just that. In this randomly generated world, you're tasked with defending the light spirit and vanquishing evil, at least for the next century. The game features permadeath for your monsters for those really hardcore nuzlocke fans, randomly generated realms for you to explore and to recruit new abomies within, a plethora of custom settings to cater each playstyle to your liking, and a focus on replayability. Honestly, this game's a lot of fun and I think more people who want to play Pokemon randomizers but don't have the means should definitely be checking this game out. It's currently on Steam. Next up we got a game that just released last year and honestly was probably top three for me for 2021 and trust me we got a lot of really good games last year but anyways we got Shin Megami Tensei 5 the fifth main installment in the Shin Megami Tensei series which revolves around recruiting and utilizing demons in multi-battle combat. Each demon has its own unique weaknesses and strengths, a ton of different abilities it can learn from your typical physical and magical attacks to abilities that'll either buff your team or cripple your enemies through various debuffs etc. You can further add to the complexity of things by fusing Using your demons together in order to create a brand new demon with attributes from the demons fused to create it. They've also added something new this time around called the Magatsuhi Gauge, if I pronounce that correctly, which are special abilities that function quite similarly to something like a Limit Break from Final Fantasy. They're basically these OP abilities that can be charged over time. On the overworld, you can explore a pretty open area. I'd say it's kind of semi-open world, if you will. All battles take place via overworld encounters, which is really nice. And all in all, I do think it's a really good game. I highly recommend checking it out. If you're looking for something a little more on the relaxing side, but still want to make some monsters fight each other to the death, then perhaps Monster Harvest is your jam. Monster Harvest is primarily a farming sim inspired by Stardew Valley with a monster taming twist. You can essentially enchant your crops in order to create creatures from them known as planimals, which can then be used to traverse these randomly generated caves at the north end of town. There you could battle your planimals against hostile enemies, collect new resources, and more. As for the farming elements, like I stated earlier, if you've played something like Stardew Valley, it's very similar in that regard, but yeah, basically if you want to farm and you want to do monster taming at the same time, definitely check this out. Now, I know for a fact that if I did not include this game in this video, I'd get at least 20 comments telling me that I should have. And that's for good reason, because Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth is considered by many to be one of the best Digimon games ever. This title has you exploring what essentially is the internet or the network, collecting and utilizing tons of different Digimon in three-on-three -three battles. You'll also find yourself investigating alleged nefarious deeds from those at the top, and the game is very story driven. Do note that because of that, the game is very dialogue heavy, like a lot of traditional JRPGs, so definitely be warned. I would still recommend it though, the dialogue is at least story related and adds to world building and is interesting to read. 
Another great title that released last year for both the Nintendo Switch and Steam was Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin, a spin-off to the Monster Hunter franchise where instead of murdering monsters and wearing them as your skin, you murder monsters and wear them as your skin, but some of them are your buddies and will fight alongside you. The game, unlike the Monster Hunter franchise, features turn-based combat where you fight alongside your monsters or monsties whilst exploring a semi-open world. The game has various weapons and armor for the player to equip a pseudo-fusion mechanic called the Rite of Channeling where you can basically take one ability from one monster and fuse it into your own monster, creating a high level of customization when it comes to how you build your monsties. And you could ride all the monsters around the map, which is a ton of fun. There's a lot more to it. You've also got dens where you could find a bunch of monsters and those are all kind of randomly generated. You've got a fun and compelling story with interesting characters. If you are playing Pokemon Legends, I do highly recommend checking out this game because Legends seems to take a lot of inspiration from it. And you'll find that some aspects to this game are even deeper than Legends and it's a really good time. Next, we got Saren Fate, an almost Zelda-like monster taming RPG with action combat featuring tons of spells to cast and weapons to use, as well as monster companions to command, roughly 50 in total. The game prides itself on its difficulty, not being an easy game to complete and requiring grind in order to do so. The game also features a large world to explore, side quests to complete, and a story that will, and I quote, delve deep into the churning depths of magic. The game also has some other cool stuff like a hard mode that will net better rewards rewards, a small potion farm for you to maintain, and timed events. Resummon is a title that released very recently, a couple weeks ago as the time of this video is going live in fact. This game describes itself as a monster taming RPG that takes place in a world where monsters and humans coexist and create contracts in order to do so. A few of this game's features include the following, over 100 monsters to contract, a focus on exploration, and, and I quote, epic story where you try to become the greatest tamer, monster fusion, fishing, and various in-game puzzles. The combat itself is turn-based like many other games in the genre and is currently available on Steam. I definitely do want to make a more in-depth video going over Resummon. Just before its launch, it kind of just popped up on my radar. So definitely expect a monster tamer showcase in the future and most likely a stream where we play the game. Now, I know the Nexomon franchise always seems to find a way onto one of these list videos, and that's because of how accessible the games are. These games are available on mobile platforms, on all consoles, on PC, etc. And not just that, they're part of an ongoing franchise. A lot of games we cover, and a lot of games in the genre in general, have just been one-offs, whereas Nexomon will continue to put out new games in the future. Anyways, all that said, if you somehow stumbled across my channel and have not heard of the Nexomon games just yet, let me just break it down real quick. You got your story-driven RPG, utilize turn-based combat. You got 380 different Nexomon to catch and train in Nexomon Extinction, nine different starters to choose from, various cosmetic outfits for your character, and a semi-open world with level scaling to boot. Nexomon 1 doesn't have as many features as Nexomon 2, but it's also a fun time as well. And finally, last but certainly not least, we have Disc Creatures, a title that launched in 2019 and describes itself as a handcrafted RPG that is a tribute to other monster taming classics. The game features three on three combat where you use your disc creatures to fight for you in this more modern setting. The title features over 200 monsters to utilize in combat, all of which were handcrafted by a single developer, a huge cast of charming characters, unique skill trees for each of the creatures, which is really cool. It'll add a huge amount of customization to each monster and a chiptune soundtrack crafted to take you down memory lane. Like I said, it's even more impressive that the game was all put together by one developer, that being Sato, who's actually working on a sequel called Disc Creatures World that we've been covering in Monster Tamer News each week. I'm really excited to actually sit down and stream this with you guys at some point, perhaps closer to the launch of Disc Creatures World to kind of celebrate. So there you go guys, those were 10 monster taming games that you could play right now whether they be on Steam or on consoles. Like I said before, definitely make sure to let me know if you want me to do another video like this because I can most definitely put together another list, no problem. I tried not to have too much overlap from the mobile list video I did a few days ago, but there's definitely a lot of crossover if we do do a second. That said, if you are a fan of monster taming games, definitely subscribe to the channel because I put out new monster taming videos every single day. You could also follow me on Twitter, GymLeaderEd, and check out my Discord. All links in the description. Special thanks to our patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Steel Case, and Dark Persona. And with that, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.